Welcome to A Slice of Therapy. This podcast was created with Anchor. And if you've not heard of Anchor, let me explain. It's free. It's a really easy way to make a podcast. And it helps me because I can just do this every day directly into my phone. Because there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. So if you fancy making a podcast too, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. There are two ways that our memories are stored by us. One is what you might call explicit memory, which is kind of the biographical stuff, the stuff that you would tell in a story. So I did this, then I did that, then I did the other thing, then they did this. The kind of blow-by-blow account, if you like. But there's another way that memory can be stored as well. And that is in the limbic system. It's in the body, basically. And so when there's a really significant event, something that your brain, which of course is working on behalf of your survival all the time, thinks, ah, I need to remember that because that's a danger situation and we need to to really remember the significant thing so we can stay safe in the future. That stuff is held in the body. So that would be, you know, you'll hear trauma therapists talk about trauma being held bodily. And of course there's responses within your autonomic nervous system, which will move you to kind of fight or flight or would move you to a feeling of being shut down and low energy and numb. And there's also the, the kind of, Beliefs, the emotional truths that come out of that. Where we make some decisions to try and help ourselves never go through that again. And they often take the forms of beliefs. So I don't know if there's a child, for instance, who was. uh, Who is sings and is loud and is playful. And yet when they do that, they come under some sort of attack, whether physical or verbal or judgmental. That might be regarded as a significant effect by the brain that's trying to protect their survival. And the belief that they might come in as a result of that is, I best best not do that again. And so may then, having made that decision, go through life, deciding that if I am visible, then it becomes unsafe. And so therefore... I'm making the decision to hide, to not be visible in life, to repress myself. And so you can see there that when a significant thing happens, as well as just the biographical memory, oh, I sang and then this happened, there is also that bodily memory, what the muscles do, what the autonomic nervous system does in terms of spiking or shutting down, but also the emotional truth in inverted commas, the belief, the decision that we make in order to keep ourselves safe going forward in the future. Now I've spoken before about the power of imagination because the thing about imagination is it uses the exact same software systems of the brain, if you like. And as a result, your body reacts to an imagined situation in a very, very similar way. This is why sports people will will visualize, you know, scoring the goal or planting the basket or whatever it happens to be. They will visualize that process And in fact, studies have shown that when you do use these visualization techniques, two groups of people who will have had the same training, say on throwing a basketball into the basket, have physically trained for the same amount of time. Those who have visualized as well do better because your body is still responding to the same kind of hallucinations of the brain. And I say hallucinations of the brain simply because A lot of our, you know, pretty much what we're seeing in the world, the brain is having to take some inputs and and create something that we can navigate for us. And it does the same in dreams and it does the same 
when we imagine and visualize as well. And so the reason why I'm telling you this is that one of the things that we can do for ourselves is something called imaginal reenactment, where we use the power of imagination in order to give our bodies and our nervous systems a different experience to the one that we actually had. And there's been studies into this which have proven really effective. And so if there was something that was difficult for you, that was significant for you, that has left some sort of belief imprint, that has left some sort of bodily imprint that makes sure that you kind of spike up or close down again, we can actually use imaginal reenactment where we reimagine that moment in such a way that you have complete power over it and it soothes your nervous system going forward. Now, one of the objections to that sometimes when I share this idea, which is a very powerful idea, is that people say, well, my God, I'd have to relive my whole childhood. And how could I reimagine my whole childhood? And the answer to that, because it's a really good point, isn't it? The answer to that is that in actual fact, our brains don't remember our whole childhood. Even if there was lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of bad stuff that happens, what we will tend to do as adults when we go back there, we will, in the, in the kind of cinema of our mind, we will tend to play back the same mini movies. So even if we went through lots and lots and lots of stuff that was difficult for us, we can actually think about the cinema of our own mind and realize that what actually plays out there are certain key representative scenes. And so rather than having to reimagine an entire childhood, what we do with this method is that we would reimagine the stuff that is going on in those mini movies that we tend to replay over and over in our minds. And this, of course, is how the brain works anyway. It generalizes. So if you were nearly eaten by a lion when you stood by a bush, your brain won't just get you agitated by that particular bush, but by other bushes because it's trying to ensure that in similar but different situations, you won't get eaten by a lion. And so the brain really does generalize in that way anyway. And so when you've got some of these key representative scenes that you notice play out for you by reimagining those scenes so they go exactly how you would have liked not so the younger you has to take any different responsibility but the the you now almost plays god in that scene and can completely reimagine that so that it gives you the feelings the experiences that you actually want going forward And so this is a, a powerful thing. I've used it with myself. I've used it with many clients. And so if that feels like something that you would be interested in doing, because what it essentially does, you see, is it, is it rewrites the old bodily learning. And that's why it's powerful and transformational. It rewrites the old bodily learning, the old belief systems from that time. And so allows you to live a different life going forward. And so if that sounds like something that feels attractive and yet you're thinking, oh my God, I would have to rewrite an entire childhood. The point of this podcast is to, this episode is to reassure you that in actual fact you don't because that's not really how your memory is remembering these things. Instead, what it's really focusing on is key representative events. And so you will find 
that the stuff that is playing, like I say, in the cinema of your mind will be a certain collection of movies. It might even only be one or two movies. It might be more. But they are the key things which are representative memories. And so by reimagining them, becoming the director of those movies and completely redoing them and experiencing in your imagination what that is like, the way it should have gone, the way you would have liked it to have gone, the way that had it have gone this way would have given you a whole set of different beliefs and feelings and experiences. You only have to reimagine those movies rather than everything that ever, ever happened. So if this is helpful, then please share it on. Um, you can subscribe to the podcast for free, of course. You can work with me directly. I'm Alan Parry. And you can find out more at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. So thanks for listening. I'll be back again tomorrow with another one.